Hey guys, welcome to Financial Friday. I hope you're all doing well. I have my questions from you. Uh, my first one was sent to my Facebook inbox um, because she wanted to remain anonymous and I wanted to let you guys know that is totally cool. Absolutely anytime you can send it to my YouTube inbox or my Facebook inbox and I will happily answer anonymous questions. Uh, uh, anonymous asks or says we make about forty five thousand before taxes. My hubs work sixty to sixty five hours a week at a full time and one part time job. We have two kids and I work part time and go to school. We owe just shy of ten K in our car, but we're not selling it. No student loans and one credit card. The card was charged off. I don't know if they'll come after us. It was about two thousand dollars. My uncle just passed away. We were close and it's been hard for me. And I was left about $3,000 in life insurance. We will also be getting about three k, I hope, back in taxes. So my question is, do you think we should save two k to potentially pay off that credit card if, when they come after us and put the other four k on the principal of our car? I know that this is a lot of info and I appreciate your input. Okay, what I would do, <laughs> and um, I speak from experience, I think it is better to go ahead and track down that creditor um, you don't know if the balance is still being held by that credit card company or if it has been uh, given to a collection agency. Uh, call them. Find out. Um, sometimes if you check your credit report, um, it might say who owns it on there. I would go ahead and take care of that. And I would treat it like a normal debt on your snowball. So since you owe 10k on your car and you only owe 2k on this credit card, I would track down that debt and take care of it as step one of your two steps, step snowball, assuming you have your baby emergency fund. I'm assuming that you're on baby step two and you're trying to pay off your debt since you're paying off your car. So here's the reason why. Not knowing can only make the problem worse. Knowing how much you owe, how much they're trying to charge you, there might have been fees tacked on. Um, they, they might still be charging you. Um, you say you think it's been charged off, but if you don't know who's holding the account, you don't know what kind of interest or fees might still be accruing. Um, if it's been sent to collections, no, it's not growing anymore, but it's still something, it's, it's like this ghost that can come after you. So I would go ahead and track that down, bite the bullet, Pay it off, especially since you've got all this money coming in. And with the rest of that, yes, assuming that you have your BS1 $1,000 emergency fund in place, um, I would put the rest of that money on the car. So that is what I would do. Um, I'll, all I know is that before I started the plan, I had, uh, and I was in, this is, this was during, right after college, before I actually started paying on my loans, I did the like, I can't pay it so I'm not going to open it thing with my student loans before I finally decided to get responsible and consolidate them and start paying on them or at least defer them, which is what I ended up doing. And you're going to torture yourself more not knowing what's happening with it than if you just call and find out how much you owe find out how much they want. And if it's a collection agency, you might be able to offer them less than the balance. So if they say that you owe them $2,500, you can say, hey, would you take a charge off a one-time payment, $1,500 to clear this debt? They might be happy just to get rid of it, especially depending on how long this debt has been open. Now, I will say, get it in writing, the deal that you strike with them, do not, absolutely do not give them access to your bank account because they'll just wipe you out. So uh, I think that covers it. But yes, I would go ahead and take care of that. Get it out of the way. Free your mind. Be free. Pay off your car and proceed with with debt freedom and, and a better money life where no there aren't any ghosts chasing you. So I hope that helps. All right. Paper Mason asks, what about your local library? Maybe there are some interesting talks or book clubs, etc. Or you can just sit and socialize. I think this was in response to me mentioning that I don't have many friends here. And um, the local public library really sucks. Like, I don't think they've gotten a new book there since like the 80s. Um, it smells like mold. It's kind of terrible. I think I have one book checked out from there. I don't, 
I don't go that often. I do go to the university library, which is nice, but there's never anyone in there. Like, I, I guess it's kind of um, a little oasis. If there are people in there, they're at the computers and they've got like headphones on and stuff. So um, yeah, no events at either of the libraries in town, but I appreciate the suggestions. Thank you. All right. Uh, Megadegs asks, Love these videos, thank you. I meant to ask, did you do a December report update? I think I missed the video, and I was wondering how you did. You didn't miss the video. I didn't do the video yet. Um, it's not funny. I'm very bad. Um, a lot has been happening this month, and I will go into that in another video. Um, the, the 2015 wrap-up is still coming. I am still budgeting. My, um, all the numbers are in. I just need to do some calculating and some other stuff. And I also like to do kind of a year end. I want to do a year in review where I kind of reviewed all of my budgets from the year and talked about, you know, where I would be making changes and everything. And I just haven't had the time or the energy to really set that up. And I don't want to go into it half-assed. Uh, so I have been, I'm still budgeting. Uh, my January budget is, is on fleek. Um, it's up to date. It's looking good. I have made changes, uh, from last year's budget and I will go into that in a video or videos. Um, I did look at my first 10K 2015 video from 2015 and it posted in the middle of February. So I think if I get this one up before the middle of February, I can call myself not a complete and total failure. So um, you didn't miss it. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> I am not as organized <laughs> as I want to be. And I just, I need more time with it. I need more time with my budget alone before I, before we come out to the public together. All right. Um, Little baby fat 0408 says, Oh, I'm so glad I found this video. I'm trying to pay off debt and eat more home cooked meals this year. This is on a food prep vid. Um, where did you get the debt poster? My um, debt thermometer was from debtfreecharts.blogspot.com, and everything there is free. It's so cool. Um, I have referred so many people to that blog, and I know so many people that use that blog. Um, I don't know who runs it, but I think they've done such a great service. They have the thermometer charts for um, anything. You can, um, they have ones that say like, mine says student loans, but, uh, does it? Yeah, it says student loans, I think. And um, they have some that say like credit cards and you can, you know, line up until you're free, free from credit cards, so like home mortgage. Um, I'll put a link to them down below. Everything's completely free. You just print it off. Um, and I think they're a great website and I thank them for what they do. Alrighty. Linda Wilson asks, random question. Will you be attending Chris and Jackie's wedding, assuming you're invited? And if it's in your budget, <laughs> that's a fun question. Um, I have not been invited, but that's fine. A wedding is a, I, I think they're having a very small, like family wedding. Also, they live in Philadelphia, which is approximately 5,000 miles from here or something. No, that's not right. It's, it, it's a very long way from here. This is an event that they have with their family. I'm sure that I will meet Chris and Jackie one day. I'm almost positive I'm going to meet Chris and Jackie one day. They are so cool and I would love to meet them. They're probably the closest people, um, friends I have on YouTube. But um, I will not be attending <laughs> their wedding. Um, I'm, I do have it in the budget to send them a little gift. So uh, that should be that should be nice. And I, I think they're going to have a wonderful ceremony and I, I can't wait for them to get married. I think it's just wonderful. So, all right. Um, Hilda 2002 asks, how many sinking funds would it be wise to have at one time? And that is completely up to you and your budget, Hilda. I'm bringing up my sinking funds. I keep mine in Capital1360.com. It's an online bank and they are not a sponsor or anything. I use them because they're a free interest-bearing online-only checking account and they allow you to have as many 
savings accounts as you want. And so I'm able to keep as many savings accounts, which is what I use sinking funds for, as I want. And I will count up how many I have. Now, I've not always had this many. I've had more and I've had less. It really just depends on what you need. Your first sinking fund should probably be Christmas um, or a car. Uh, if you, you know, everyone, <laughs> if you drive, eventually you're going to need a new car. That's the, that's the way cars work. They give out. And so a lot of people do and should keep a car sinking fund so that they'll have cash when they're ready to pay for their next car and you don't have to sign a fleece or um, finance it because paying cash gets you a better deal. And Christmas comes at the same time every year and so many people panic when November and December come around. They're like, oh, Christmas came up. It's an emergency. I have to use my credit card, but it's not an emergency. You can very easily decide how much you're going to spend on Christmas in January, save a twelfth of that amount every month, and then you'll have Christmas ready to pay for in cash. Alrighty, I have my singing funds here, and I'm not going to show you them because my account numbers are up, but I have my checking account, which is not a singing fund, but I have my emergency fund, which is in a savings account, um, though that's not a singing fund either, and then I have uh, another savings account. All right, here are my sinking funds. Christmas fund, pet fund, and that's for Rory's annual shots and her heartworm and her flea medication and stuff like that. Uh, medical fund for copays, for NyQuil if I get sick, for anything medical related, um, from chicken soup to splints. All right, uh, electrical monthly overflow which is a sinking fund, which I use, um, I budget the same amount for electricity every month. And if there is any leftover, say in the winter months, when I'm not using as much electricity, I put it in this fund. So when in the summer, when electricity costs more, I have some to pull out of there. So technically it's a sinking fund for when electricity costs more. So there's that car repair fund. That's five, um, laptop fund six, because I'm always saving for a new laptop because you know every few years you're gonna need new laptops so there's not much money in there but I'll have the cash for it when I need the laptop all right pig fest fund which is an annual uh, family reunion I go to it only costs about forty dollars but I save about four dollars a month for it and I have it ready to pay for it in cash all right operation Christmas child fund since I do two boxes every year for one of my favorite charities that money I once again I save about four dollars a month and I have the cash on hand ready to do that when uh, November hits and I never have to touch my regular budget uh, my birthday fund which I'm about to be able to cash out um, and that is for cake or eating out or buying myself a birthday present whatever I want to do with it uh, there's sixty dollars and twenty cents in it so I get to spend that this month um, domino cruise fund which is uh, next year my college friends and I are planning on taking a cruise and so I put a little bit of money out of my personal money in that every month and then finally lawn sinking fund so I have 11 sinking funds and the lawn sinking fund is uh, is new this year actually what I was doing was I had budgeted $60 a month because during when I have to get my lawn cut I um, it's $30 each time the guy mows, he mows twice a month. Um, and what I was doing was I had $60 set aside in the budget every single month. Beth explained to me that that was dumb. Uh, <laughs> because I'm only getting my lawn mowed seven months of the year. The rest of the time it's too cold. And so what I was doing was putting that money towards my student loans when I didn't need my lawn cut. But instead, instead what I should be doing is... Um, taking that $60 for seven months, dividing that out over 12 months, and then be saving that so that I have the money when the actual time is to spend it, but I'm not, and then I can use the rest of the money for other things like savings and et cetera. So um, yes, lawn sinking fund is in there. So 11 sinking funds for me right now. Um, I think when I started out, I had 
a Rory fund, a Christmas fund. And a car repair fund. And if you start with those three sinking funds, I think you'll be good. You can then add in more as you find other expenses that pop up that you can save for instead of having them blindside you. So I love my sinking funds. It allows me not to change up my budget. It allows me to prepare for the future. Um, it's awesome. <laughs> and because I've been doing this for enough years now, nothing surprises me anymore. Really, not pff, knock on wood. But yeah, nothing surprises me now. Uh, there aren't really any unexpected expenses that come up. Another one that would be good to do is like your vehicle registration, if that costs a lot. Mine costs like 30 bucks, so I just make room for it in that month's budget. But I'd say anything more than like $40, I make a sinking fund for. And then I nothing nothing surprises me nothing scares me it's awesome i will put a link to capital one 360 below once again not a sponsor but i highly recommend them as a place to keep your sinking funds because you can have as many accounts as you want all within the same place um and i have a debit card that will i can transfer money out of the sinking funds into my checking account instantly on my phone or online and then i can use my debit card to spend that money if i need to all right um, Jen Thompson says, for your birthday, I think you should adopt a puppy for Rory. Don't you dare say that. I can barely handle that little fuzzy thing. All right. Too much information for the internet, but I came home and it is, I'm going to regret this. It is my time of the month. And so I had a box of tampons and pads out and I put them on my desk that sits at the bottom um, of my bed because I need to grab some to put in my purse. And I have switched to a menstrual cup recently, but it's the very beginning of my period and a, a pad was just more comfortable. So I had this sitting out, the box sitting out on the bottom of my bed. It had some tampons and pads in it and I just got back. She was fine. It was there all day. I came home after work. It was there. I just got back from jujitsu class she apparently got mad that I had left her alone that long. She tore all of it apart. Plastic applicators, cotton, everywhere. All over my bed. All over my floor. And now she's hiding under my bed because I yelled at her. Fuzzy little butthole. Do your dogs ever get into stuff like that? I mean, she only, she only does it if she's like upset with me. Or something if she thinks that I've slighted her in some way like left her home alone too long or something and she knows better is what kills me she's not a puppy she didn't, she didn't do it because she was bored she didn't piss me off anyway no no new puppy friend for Rory bad dog all right um, Jen Thompson also said, I'm probably not expecting that. Um, also, my question is, since you're scheduled to be debt free in a year and a half, fingers crossed, me too, um, have you thought about how long you expect to be on baby step three? I hadn't until today. I tend to think of things in a bit of a short term because thinking about things that are going to happen too far away makes my brain hurt. <laughs> Like when I started the debt free journey, I, I think I, I think I'd scheduled it out once to see how long it would take me to pay off. And I think I wrote down 2020 and that was too far away for me to fathom. So I just wanted to focus on like this year, this month. And that's where the 10K 2015 challenge came from because I can't think about the life of the loan without feeling like overwhelmed. So, but I can think about a year. What can I accomplish in a year? So, no, I hadn't thought about how long it would take. Now, and now we're getting closer. So I, I, I'm doing the math and I'm realizing I'll be out of debt, you know, by summer of 2017, which is kind of cool, about a year and a half. That's, that's far enough away for me to fathom. Of course, three years ago when I started this, that was too far away to fathom. Also, the date was a lot further out. So, um, <laughs> Uh, I hadn't thought about how long I would be on baby step three until today. So I did the math. And as, as you probably know, Dave recommends a three to six month 
big emergency fund. And that's baby step three after you pay off all of your consumer debt. And um, as a journalist, I mean, the three to six months depends on how secure your job is, um, you know, if you have a family, if you have a home, uh, all, of, all of that jazz, you need to kind of calculate your number to figure out how much you are comfortable with sitting in the bank as kind of like a nest egg, as a, um, like a get out of dodge plan. Um, I, I put a post on my Facebook today. It was a really good story. You should go check it out. And, um, she called it the F off fund <laughs> or the F U fund. And the language there was not bleeped out. Um, and it was basically this, this story of a young woman who was being sexually harassed by her boss, but she was so bad at managing her money. She didn't have any money saved. Oh, and she also had a bad relationship with her boyfriend, which she was living with. She was just so trapped by her lack of money. She didn't have any freedom. And I thought it was a wonderful way to really visualize how much freedom and power that nest egg, that emergency fund can give you. I cannot wait to be able to sit on that BS3 money and you know what? If work is just absolutely killing me, I am not happy, people are treating me badly, anything like that, I've got the money to get up, get out, and it's my F off fund. Now, <laughs> I do dream about that, but I've never crunched the numbers. And so I did. So according to my budget right now, since I make $2,200 a month um, from my work, not including any YouTube earnings, um, times six, uh, because I'm a journalist, a bigger emergency fund is better and I've been employed for five months before. So, um, 2,200 times six is $13,200. Now that seems an eensy bit high to me because if I were to lose my job, I would change my budget to, um, what I would call my bare bones budget. There would not be any restaurant money. There would not be any personal spending things would change <laughs> a little bit. Some of my sinking funds would stop. Um, and I've, and I've planned this out before. What would, what would I change in my budget if a catastrophe were to happen? If I lost my job, um, if I were injured, something like that, where all of a sudden my, my income were in danger and I needed to make some fast changes. So, um, I've decided that $10,000 should be my emergency fund. That would be five months-ish at around $800 a month. So, um, which is, or uh, five months-ish month, month -ish at $2,200 a month. Now, because I won't be making my uh, BS3 fund until I'm out of debt, I'll have all the money that I actually put at debt to use to put towards my emergency fund, which averages to about $800 a month right now, based on 10K 2015. So about $800 a month is um, what I would be able to put towards my emergency fund, um, which calculated out um, would be about 12.5 months, which means I could save about $10,000 in just around, right around a year. So I think baby step three will take me about a year, which is really cool. Which means that by July 2018, I could be sitting on $10,000. Can you imagine how many things just wouldn't matter anymore if you have $10,000 in the bank, no debt? You lose your job, you're fine with $10,000 in the bank. At least I would be. I would be for quite some time. So, yeah. That's put a smile on my face all day. Even when my uh, sparring partner in Jiu-Jitsu put me in a headlock and it really, really hurt. It still hurts. <coughs> um, <laughs> and our very last question for the day. Anyway, thank you for asking that question, Joan Thompson, because 
I hadn't crunched the numbers before, and I'm really excited about them now. And it'll only take me a year, because I won't have debt. <laughs> Alright. <coughs> really bad. Really bad headlock. Never let somebody get your back. Uh-uh. Alright. Last question. <laughs> Alright. Alexa Brianna says, can you share a blank budget sheet? Um, yes. I've done a video before where I show... Um, Chris and Jackie do this a really cool way. They have an entire series on how to build your own budget spreadsheet that like rolls down like theirs does. Everything equals out. That makes my brain hurt. <laughs> the way my brain works is I have this like master box that has my budget in it and then all these outside boxes where that feed to the master box and I put in like where and what and what I did and how much I spent and they all calculate down and they all report back to the main box and there's like it's it's very colorful it's very fun um it's just the way my brain works so if you think something like that might be a good budget for you I will link a video below where I show you what I have and give you a link to a um google excel sheet that has one of my budgets in it. And if you know anything at all about Excel, it will be very easy. All the formulas are in there. You can play around with it. You can see how the boxes feed to each other and how everything goes around. And what you can do is make a copy of it to your own Google Drive. Do not request access. <laughs> I get emails probably every other day saying, this person has requested access to your example budget. No, <laughs> because what would happen then is all of you would be changing that budget and then nobody else could use it. So what you have to do is go to file, save as, or file, make a copy, and then save that to your own Google Drive, and then you can play with it all you want. And if my budget doesn't work for you, that's fine. I will not be offended in the slightest. Um, go check out Chris and Jackie's. Their series is awesome. I couldn't sit through five minutes of it because that's just not how my brain works. But they have a really, really cool budget and I've seen it work for a lot of people. Uh, so try theirs if mine doesn't work. If uh, theirs doesn't work, try mine. And I will link that video below. So again, you can save a copy of that budget. And it is very, it is all very rudimentary Excel. Um, I did not know how to use Excel really when I made it. So I'm really sure that you can figure it out if you just highlight the box. If you click on the box, you'll see what formula I've used. It's all just like equals and plus and minus. That's it. Uh, so that's, it's, it's very simple. I think it's fun. It's the budget I've been using for years and I'm very happy to share it with you. Of course, completely free because I, anything I can do to help. So I am really sorry it's 30 minutes already. And I did not even get through the first page of questions, and I still have all these. So, um, yes, I will save the rest of these for next week. If I didn't get to your question, I'm so sorry. I will get to it next week, and um, you can you can ask it again below, or you can just trust that I did I did copy it off. Um, Willie Jones, Rihanna, Beely, Fernanda, Medina. Megan, Bechtel, Kate Collins, and Tracy Campola. I got your questions. I will answer them next week. I'm sorry I didn't get them to them today. Uh, any of the rest of you, ask your questions below. I will probably be less uh, long-winded <laughs> next week. And I hope you have a wonderful day. You can comment on my new lovely glasses that I spent probably $8 on online. I can also link my how to buy glasses online for super cheap video below if you would like, if you're so interested in that. It's very awkward. It was one of the first videos I did and I do this a lot. But the content is good. So I will see you all later. Happy Financial Friday and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Bye.